If I scan the last hundred years of history, and I ask, when's the last time the President of the United States directed the government to embrace a new asset class? <laughs> the answer is never. So I think that Bitcoin should be taking a victory lap for what happened here just in the past few weeks. Well, Kathy, um, I just wanted to dispel one question I've been getting all morning as I walk around the show. People are asking me whether or not I'm still bullish on Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to you know, just clarify that I am more bullish than ever on Bitcoin. Uh. Seeing the politics around Bitcoin changing radically because it has become, you know, uh, the, the single issue that some people are voting on. And this is bipartisan. Uh, and even where we've moved in St. Pete, uh, because people know that uh, I'm very Bitcoin uh, uh, focused, uh, they, the politicians have become, come to me and said, I want to, I want to pull together a room of Bitcoin enthusiasts. Uh, and I, I really want to learn from them what they want from us. Think about that. Think about that. That's, that is a radical shift over the last few years. There is someone whispering in uh, the, the ears of politicians, if you want to lose, if you want the US to lose out on this, the, one of the most amazing innovation platforms of all times, you keep talking like that. So she has t changed her tune. So I'm very positive here. And of course, we're meeting people from around the world, just met from Honduras, Mexico. Uh, I think the movement is spreading pretty quickly now. If you roll back 12 months, you, you had so many smart people that had a lot of money and power saying, Bitcoin looks too good to be true. It's so good, someone's gonna ban it, right? <laughs> we heard that. And um, I think a couple of weeks ago with the, with the executive order, what we had was the president of the United States giving a green light to Bitcoin. <laughs> if I scan the last hundred years of history and I asked, when's the last time the President of the United States directed the government to embrace a new asset class? <laughs> the answer is never. So I think that Bitcoin should be taking a victory lap for what happened here just in the past few weeks in the United States government. Because a year ago, Bitcoin was, maybe it was Eastern technology and it wasn't Western technology and maybe the government was gonna ban it and we're afraid of it. And what happened in the last 12 months is Bitcoin moved west, Bitcoin has been embraced. The administration has given a green light to Bitcoin. And, you know, Congress and the Senate are enthusiastically figuring out Bitcoin. And now there's a little jockeying, I think, about who can be the most pro-Bitcoin politician. I mean, the momentum is clearly behind Bitcoin. <laughs> yes. um, a lot of people have anxiety about regulation, uh, but I, and they ask me, aren't you afraid? And I, have, I do not have anxiety about regulation. Uh, you know, when I look at this, I say, yeah, there's a lot of stuff to be worked through. FASB's working through some accounting issues. FDIC's working through some banking issues. SEC's working through some security issues. You know, the administration's working through all their issues. But regardless of how fast that happens and how sharp that occurs, I don't think there's any outcome other than favorable for Bitcoin. And I think that what I say over and over again is, Bitcoin is the ethical safe haven for any public figure, and it is, it is the technical safe haven for any technical company and it is the financial safe haven for any investors. So if you have anxiety, I think that people that are thinking about this are gonna realize that Bitcoin is the risk off crypto asset network. Important issue is you walk into a room with, with people that have collectively 10 or $20 trillion, and you tell the story, and they say, well, 
you know, Bitcoin sounds better than gold, and Bitcoin sounds better than owning a big tech stock, and Bitcoin sounds like the solution to all the world's problems, and it's just so good that someone is going to take it away from me because it's too good. And what you need is this one page memo from the White House saying, no, we're not taking it away from you. Well, and then at that point, people can start to put billions of dollars into this asset. The regulatory future is bright. Let's talk about economics. Look, I think economically, everything that's, uh, that we're seeing in the last 12 months, inflation, war in Ukraine, Russian sanctions, the Canadian trucker crisis, uh, CPI, unexpected PPI, uh, and, uh, and anxiety about uh, how to manage a portfolio. All of these things have been bullish for Bitcoin, and anybody that thinks about it would realize that although they're unfortunate and unpleasant for the world, um, they have underscored to every mainstream objective observer the use case for uh, a global non-sovereign store of value crypto asset like Bitcoin in a way that none of Michael Saylor's talking ever would. Yes, one thing that I know and that we agree on is that in, if inflation is an issue, clearly Bitcoin is a great hedge against inflation. When we look at uh, the deflationary um, impact of the various technologies uh, that around which we have centered our research, we think longer term deflation and creative destruction associated with disruptive innovation, that's the bigger risk. And when you think about Bitcoin in those terms, uh, you're thinking about a hedge against counterparty risk. Uh, so if we're going to have this debt deflationary bust that some still worry about out there, you've got Bitcoin as a hedge against that. So, you know, it's as an investor, whenever I hear win-win, I usually don't believe it, uh, but as it, it is very interesting to watch the, the equity markets uh, or the investors in equity markets treating Bitcoin and other crypto assets like they are treating the rest of tech, which is not very well of late. Uh, and, uh, and, and to see the holding behavior in, uh, uh, in the Bitcoin community, I think, uh, is it 70% uh, of the Bitcoin outstanding, so th roughly 13 and a half million units of the 19 are in long-term holding hands. And uh, I think that technology is, is going to drive the adoption of Bitcoin more aggressively in the coming 36 months, even than it has in the last 36 months. And then you're going to see tens of trillions and then hundreds of trillions of dollars all moving on lightning rails secured by the Bitcoin network. And then people are going to wake up and realize, holy crap, this stuff really is going to change the world. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I often, when, when it, we're trying to impress upon investors how important this movement is, what I usually say is, okay, listen to this and listen to every word because every word is important. Bitcoin is the first, first global, that's really important as Michael said, private, now it's open source, but there's no government involvement. So private, so first global, private, digital, rules-based monetary system in the history of the world. It is a very big idea. Yeah. If you want to turn 250 million into 6 billion, buy Bitcoin. <laughs> Don't buy gold. If I bought gold, I would have had $250 million worth of gold instead of $6 billion worth of Bitcoin. So when I say it's a lever and it's a ladder, I mean, yes, it's a ladder. So now at the end of, right about now, we've got 24 publicly traded miners. We've got, we got another dozen public companies. We've got $100 billion worth of assets flowing in this economy. I've, investment banks are doing deals, they're doing ATMs, they're doing convertible debt, we've done junk bonds, we've done all sorts of things. And I feel like the capital market's coming alive. From my perspective, Kathy, 
24 months ago, I went to Merrill Lynch and I said, I want to buy Bitcoin. They laughed at me and said, not only will I not sell it to you, we're not allowed to talk about it or we get fired. <laughs> like, okay, well, then I wired like $175 million out of that bank and I went somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> Uh, what we're seeing with Bitcoin and traditional institutional investors is the same thing ARK is seeing about all of our strategies, associated with all of our strategies. They're very volatile. That's scary for institutional investors. There's no index. They're not in my index. So, you know, this would be very risky to get involved. This is a new asset class, you know, and, it ha and we don't even know what the regulations are. Uh, so we're, we're seeing a lot of pushback still that way. But as many of you may know, uh, in our Big Ideas 2022, which is at arc-invest.com, we have a, a price target in 2030 for Bitcoin of more than a million dollars per Bitcoin. And, and yeah, see, even you can't believe it. I, I expected a big roaring. No, but we, and if you go in and you'll see how we build that case, we see institutional investors, all we expect over the next eight years is um, that two and a half percent, roughly two and a half percent of, uh, of assets, institutional assets are allocated to Bitcoin. So we don't need a lot. And if it's more than that, and that's how institutional investors work. They tiptoe in. In the 70s, it was real estate. In the 80s, it was emerging markets, 80s and 90s. And now I think it's going to be crypto starting with Bitcoin. And that's very important, starting with Bitcoin, because uh, they understand what it is and what it's not. It's not a security. Whenever I meet with uh, billionaires or CEOs, what, normally what they say to me is, my daughter or my son said you're a rock star and I have to meet you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and they're like, you know, I, you know, I, I had a guy come to my house. Uh, that I met his son, and the next day, the son brought his father, and his father could, like, buy the entire city of Miami. And, uh, and he said, well, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I know Bitcoin is really important, and my son says I got to sit down and listen. And so I orange-pilled him for two hours. And... Uh, I'm not going to say who, because it's, it's such a common story, but, I, but my point here is every one of you knows someone. Go tell a CEO, go tell your father, go tell your mother, go tell somebody that Bitcoin's going to change the world and they should figure out more about it, because the number one thing you can do is educate the world on Bitcoin and let people know they need to figure out Bitcoin. And every one of you does make a difference because I would never get those meetings if it wasn't like some, someone that went and said, you got to pay attention. And my last point to you, you do not sell your Bitcoin. <laughs> Thank you.